In this video I am going to show you how to ruggedize these wonderful cruiser LEDs I bought some of that unfortunately look great and uh, there's a great product except they're not really rugged enough for my taste in a sailboat. So uh, they have a red light in the middle and they have uh, three stages of intensities up to 11 watt that uses 18 milliamps unfortunately when it's completely off and 37 when the red light is on. As the unit is turned on it will uh, uh, turn red so you can find your on button and uh, that's how that does. When you flick the switch off the cabin lights you will have something to aim for when you stumble through the cabin and, and turn it on. But um, unfortunately the uh, printed circuit boards underneath here are not protected in any way and uh, they will corrode if they're used in a boat <coughs> and uh, therefore I'm going to show you what we can do about it instead of uh, just putting them in and see how long they last. So uh, first of all we have to uh, take them apart and uh, that is a fairly simple process. Disconnecting power again and then the finger screws up top here, all four of them. This is what it takes to get this thing apart. And then the top plate that has a diffuser on, or rather four diffusers on top of the LEDs, can be lifted off once we have removed this button that is used for the touch switch. And it's connected with this plastic screw on the bottom side. And uh, once that's removed, we have this little mushroom shaped button and a plastic screw that go in the bucket for reassembly later. And this can be put away until we have cleaned everything up. Underneath that there is uh, some screws that uh, keep a distance between the LEDs and the diffuser that is necessary to get a good well spread light out in the cabin and they can be removed with just your fingers. Uh, the two smaller of them have screws in the back this is uh, easy and then the other ones just have a hole and they're actually quite hard to get hold of. Unfortunately they can be loosened with the fingers. That bit there has a mirror on it and that's only cosmetic and here's the buttons that will hold the mounting screws into wood or whatever we screw it into. And here's the offensive PCB. There is no covering on at that at all and the east IC uh, legs there are 0.65 millimeters apart, apart and they're not coated and uh, there's residue of a uh, resin uh, flux there that has not been cleaned off. While there is some sorts of uh, flux that uh, can be left on the board never looks good and this is partially exposed and they can also be corrosive so it's better to clean them off. If it's a really tough uh, flux you can remove it with a flux remover. Uh, RP Electronics on, uh, on Rupert has a, there's a red LEDs and in the middle there there's uh, the touch pad that connect to the mushroom uh, button and that one of course we have to keep clear of the coating that we put on at a later state. So have a good look at that and of uh, the board. What we're going to do is we're going to put an acrylic uh, conformal coating on it. There are two kinds of conformal coating. One is silicone and one is acrylic and uh, either will work. But first I will uh, touch up all the solderings on the board course we know it works so there's a connection but some of them might not be entirely up to my standard so I'm just touching up everything that I don't like the light inside of and then I can clean the uh, flux off with q-tip and 100% isopropyl alcohol this however is very tough stuff so I'm instead ending up using a, a little uh, paintbrush and uh, simply immersing the board in isopropyl alcohol in a well uh, ventilated place. And now we have to cover the central hole there. Do not use electrician's tape. It will peel right off in the acrylic paint. Instead use uh, model putty, modeling clay or something like that. 
do not use chewing gum for it. It tastes terrible afterwards. And there we go. All done. And do not cover any of the sort of pads, pads with it. So out I went and here's a conformal coating that uh, I was using, an acrylic conformal coating and I have sprayed that on the board and it dries up in a very few minutes. So right away I'm taking some Q-tips and I'm cleaning the acrylic off the top of the LEDs. Not that it would matter a lot, but uh, I think it's a better idea to have completely unobstructed view of the light and also it might matter in uh, in terms of the cooling of the LEDs. So I'm wiping that off. If it is allowed to dry all uh, the way and, uh, and get a bit harder, it's fairly easy to just scrape off with a little hobby knife or uh, something like that. Just one little uh, slide across will take the acrylic off. It's a layer that I would guess it's something like a quarter of a millimeter that I sprayed on just enough that it flows out and uh, gets a little bit underneath all of the chips and uh, covers everything. The main thing is the uh, little fine pitch chips there because there's very thin metal and there's very uh, little distance between the pins and what actually happens here is there's 12 volts sitting on that chip and there can very easily be uh, a voltage drop of 12 volts from one pin to the other over a distance of maybe 0.3 millimeters. That's a lot of field, so if there's any kind of humidity in the air, uh, the electricity will creep over on the board and it will uh, eat up the pins and suddenly the IC just have no pins that will fall off and uh, the board will have stopped working a long time ago. Now it's coated. Coating is almost dry. I'm of course breathing this, which you shouldn't and uh, I'm just going to try that everything is working and it I have to actually catch the the pin down underneath there so I'm removing now the uh, uh, modeling clay and we will try one more time out with that and we will try one more time and hook it up here we have the pilot light and I shall just touch that pad there and on it comes. So what is left now is to put the thing together and uh, I have cleaned off both the two plates here uh, with a uh, uh, cloth, the one I use for my glasses to make everything nice and clean. Uh, it'll be visible once it's mounted and very hard to get in between there. The uh, acrylic uh, conformal coating is quite sticky uh, still. It uh, takes a little bit of time to harden up, but we can go ahead and assemble it right now. Just backwards the way we uh, took it apart. In the middle of the board here is this uh, little copper ring where the mushroom shaped touch button is uh, touching down. And we can of course not have any uh, dirt on that or, or conformal coating or anything like that and it's also a place that would be prone to corrode so we have to do something different there um, it is possible to get some grease that has uh, uh, some uh, coal uh, carbon in it and uh, it's very good also for spade plugs and so on if there's some of those left in your boat I tend to cover everything with that and likewise if I if I make a soldering between two wires and so on I put that on before I put uh, a couple of layers of, of uh, uh, shrink wrap on and of course you have to be very careful with solderings on a boat uh, it should never be done as, as it, um, the only connection between two wires you have to mechanically relieve it in some way because otherwise vibration is prone to break the wire just in the uh, place where the soft copper uh, goes into where the, um, uh, the sort of tin is uh, making the cable stiff so mechanical relief of some sort always and then the grease on top and then waterproof it and I'm going to put, when I get in the boat, I'm going to put a little bit on that ring and then remount the uh, mushroom shape 
a button that's lying here on the table in front of me and uh, that will seal that up and I will not have problems with that either. So that was the four screws and the big ones with the holes in the middle that's where the mounting screws go in and screws into the wood when once I've got into the boat and uh, and, uh, and mount it. At the back there's two wires coming out. They've actually put a little bit of liquid electrician's tape on there in the hope that they would uh, prevent the uh, wires from showing bare copper there. And I will also touch that up. I've got some liquid, liquid electrician's tape uh, in the boat. So all the plates are nicely cleaned off bottom and top. And uh, don't use your glasses cloth on top of the acrylic paint. It, it will not make the cloth very nice for the glasses later. There are little uh, uh, silicone uh, uh, rings that are underneath the uh, screws here. Not all of the units seem to have them. They might have saved them away as after all almost a cent on a hundred and four dollar unit and uh, every cent counts apparently when it comes to these things here and uh, I shall just put the last two screws in here and now we are imagining that I'm taking my uh, carbon grease and I'm putting it on the end of the uh, touch button and then I will assemble into that not so much on that it splats out all over and touches the uh, LEDs in the middle because remember we've got 12 volts on here and anything that can make a contact will uh, create corrosion because there will be a creeping current. And the unit is finished and we just have to che check that it does indeed work. Um, there we go, as the power is applied, 37 milliamps, red light and you can find it and press it and it seems to work perfectly but now it's waterproof and I am betting that this would actually work underwater at present there we go it is working it is ready to install in the boat and it'll last for 10 years in this way so I'll return it to its bag and its box and I'll have a nice day out there and this is what it looks like and we can see all the LEDs are on that's so nice that's what happens when you have proper solderings and it will hopefully look like that for many many years. Good luck with your projects.